Amen. Go ahead, Brother Holly. Help yourself. In case some of you was wondering, that boy walked three hours to church. Walked three hours to the revival meeting. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Help yourself. He's coming back, Lord God. It's like that sign says, He's coming back, hallelujah. You're saved, bless God. Let's bust them graves right open, hallelujah. You don't have to worry for in that rapture. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to be cast down everlasting fire. Look at the God up on the day of the Lord. And there shall be saved, hallelujah. Salvation. There ain't no tomorrow. Hey. The Lord, get up here right now. Lord God, the last in hand, boy. Oh. Hey, man. That, that's Brother Harley. He preached for us Wednesday night. If you'd like a tape. Let us know, okay? <laughs> Come give us testimony. I'd like to say I thank God for saving me. Whenever Brother Danny came to church, to over to Cedar Cliff, I hated to go to church. I hated everything about it. But my mom, she told me ever since I can remember. She wanted me to grow up and go to church. And she'd ask me, she'd say, Leslie, whenever you get big, are you going to go to church and live for God like you need to? And I couldn't answer. God saved my soul on November 29th. Amen. And ever since then, I've been carrying my Bible. And I've lost a lot of buddies. And bias to be around me. But it'll be worth it one of these days. I'll try to, I'll try to talk to them. And I say, I just don't want to hear it no more. That's all you know anymore. And that's all you want to talk about. But that is all I know, and that is all I want to talk about. I'll say something about this young lady. The Lord really used her. I, the, she got saved third or fourth night or something like that, and then started singing a song. It almost become the theme song of the revival. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. People got to coming from everywhere. The revival over yonder. And it's still going, still going strong. People still being saved and. Hey, you try to get a 15-year-old to get up and do like this young lady just done. Some of you some of you 15-year-olds think you're silly, you know. That's ridiculous. You just don't know what she's got. Hey, man, you're in, a, you're in another land, man. You're really missing it. And she's going to say something and sing that song, No Other Name, like the name of Jesus. I want to thank the Lord for saving my soul and for giving me the assurance to know that I am saved. Amen. To know that I don't have to worry about hell. I don't have to worry about it. It's been settled. You know, Leslie, I've heard all these kids talking about carrying their Bibles into high school. And I was talking to a girl at work the other day, and it's hard for me to carry my Bible into where I work. And I thought, well, they're going into high school and carrying their Bibles, and the Lord's helping them. So through them and their encouragement, I've started carrying mine to work, and it's hard, but the Lord's helped me, He's saved me, He's going to lead me on. I thank you for that. Now this scares me. <laughs> well, I want to thank God I'm saved. Amen. And this, this little girl right here that's just talking about People did start to tell her that she's crazy, because I did. People was afraid to be around her, because she was on fire for God. And I've been, I was there every day. And there's lots of days I couldn't go when they was there. I'd have to wait till she was gone. You know, it, it feels good. I was 21 years old, and I thought I'd been living a long time. 
I'd got out and done lots of things, but I hadn't ever lived none. This next song we're fixing to sing, I thank God there ain't no name like, like the name of Jesus. I thank God there's no other name like the name of Jesus. I thank God in Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But you know, a Christian, I mean, as a Christian, you can say that, that you can thank God for His blood that saves from sin. But you know, I've got something even greater than that to look forward to. I thank God over there in Revelations one of these days. Thank God I'll hear a voice that says, Come up hither. Thank God. Boy, this whole, this whole meeting's supposed to be on the second coming. And thank God He is coming. And boy, I'm looking forward to Him. Tonight, if you don't know that He is coming, boy, you better get to know. If you're not ready to meet the Lord tonight, tonight will be a good night for you to get that way. Lynn just thanks this scares him. I just thank the Lord for saving my soul. Amen. That's a lot. I don't have to go to hell. I never know what I'm going to say when I get up here, but I can always thank you for saving me.
true that we well, and I have to give up some friends when you get saved, but there ain't no friend worth going to hell over. I've lost, I've lost some friends when I've, since I got saved, but I think it's worth it. I know I'm going to heaven. Um, right here, you're looking at a man. Uh, I used to do dope. I used to be heavy into drugs. But Lord looked after me. He saved my soul. And anybody, I'm talking to anybody out here who does drugs. Don't do it. There's something better waiting for you in heaven. Amen. We got we got a group from Mountain Home Baptist Church helping us tonight. Raise your hand over. I want to recognize you. Okay. Okay. Amen. Wasn't that a blessing? I mean, they just getting, you wouldn't believe the testimony. Some of them gave testimonies. They thought they'd never even see them go to church, let alone get up in front of a crowd like this. That's what the Lord can do. Let's say that verse. Matthew. Let's do it again. Matthew. One more time, ready? Matthew. All right, let's sing our theme song. Ready? Hit it. You can just be seated there. Hit it, Kathy. attention just for a few short minutes. What you're going to see tonight is a message the Lord gave me in the past few months. This is the first time these have ever been shown, and as far as I know, tonight will be the first time anybody's ever seen on slides some of the things you're going to see tonight. I'm here not to be sensational by any means, but to prove to you that Jesus is coming. You may not be aware of what's going on in the world, 
But I tell you, friend, put the lights back off, please. Back off. Jesus is coming. And I'm telling you, one of these days, just as He promised, He's coming again. Please, no one leave unless you absolutely have to tonight. I'm going to be brief and to the point. I'm going to show you some things and allow you to see some things and hear some things that will convince you beyond any shadow of a doubt we're near the end. Now, my personal opinion is that I believe the Lord is going to let man go on and on and on trying to build himself a kingdom down here, trying to make the world a better place to live. And just like he did in the Tower of Babel, the Lord's going to about let them get what they want and then he's going to smash it. And he'll set up a kingdom one day that has never, will never have an end and will smash all the other kingdoms and he will be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Young person tonight, this is no joke. This is not just something we get together and do on Saturday nights just to have something to do. This is the most important business in the world. Time is running out. God gave us a certain amount of time to do whatever we're going to do for Him. If we do not do it in that time, the Lord is not going to wait on us. As I said, you're going to see some things tonight that's going to shock you. You're going to see some things tonight that may shake you up. God knows if we ever had a generation that needed to be shook up, it's this one that we're living in. I'm going to explain something to you first of all tonight. Notice you start the sign over here on your far left starts out with 1955. The last days begin strong back in 1948 when Israel sent their flag up and became a nation again. There had been no nation of Israel for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The flag went up in, in May of 1948 and in next month, the 14th of next month, will end 40 years. The fig tree put forth its leaves and bud almost a full 40 years ago. ACDC sang a song that said, back in 1955, man didn't know about a rock and roll show and all that jive. The white man had the smarts, the black man had the blues. No one knew what they were going to do, but Joukowsky had the news. Let there be drums. Let there be guitars. They said he began to create his own religion in 1955. In 1960, things got worse. We, we kicked God and the Bible out of our public school systems officially in 64, 63. Six months later, we had a dead president in Dallas, Texas. The nation was crying out, God, why did this happen? Right after that, four mop head Dope addicts from Liverpool came over here and the United States has never been the same since that day. Now listen, you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to tell it like it is. You listening? Now if you've been going to a church that don't tell it like it is, you probably can't handle this, but I'm going to try to do it as easy as I can, but I've got to tell you the truth. You know what we call this kind of preaching? We call it not beating around the bush. Now listen to me tonight. You might like that young boy who had him a girlfriend. He's wanting to marry her. And he sat down and he looked at her eyes and she said, he said, Oh, your eyes are like the beautiful sky in the blue daytime. Your hair is like the flowing soft wind that comes from the south. Your, your, your skin is soft as the summer breeze. And, all. and he said, your, your eyes are in steel and cold as the snow. And she said, Forget the weather report, man. Put the ring on my finger. So tonight what I'm going to do, I'm going to forget the weather report and put the ring on you. Okay? The rapture is the next event on God's clock. The rapture, in case you don't know what the rapture means, it, the word means caught up. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and the Bible said, We which are alive and remain shall be caught to meet the Lord in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now listen, what's going to happen next is we're going to have the rapture of the church. Well, it's some time past where we are right now. See, I got 1989 wrote there. We don't know how long it'll be. Maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe two years, maybe three years. Nobody knows for sure. But we know one thing. The stage is set. 
after the rapture, you're going to have seven years down here, and that says, calls it the tribulation. The word tribulation comes from the word trouble. It comes from a little tool called a tribulum that they used to beat wheat out in a threshing floor and beat it and beat it. The word trouble comes from that word tribulum and it said tribulation in the Bible such as never had been nor ever would be. The number 666 marks the tribulation as the mark of the beast. And we're going to show you how the mark is already being set up in the United States and throughout the world tonight while me and you are sitting in this church this evening. Listen, after that seven years, while we're up there at the judgment seat of Christ, oh, you know what's breaking loose down here on this earth. We're up there at the judgment seat of Christ getting the wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment that we might be presentable to our groom, the Lord Jesus, at the end of the tribulation at the marriage. We're coming back with Him where that other arrow is, falling behind Him on white horses and clean white linen to rule and reign in a thousand-year honeymoon with our new husband. Then we're going to move into a brand new home, a solid gold city, and live in it forever and ever and ever and ever. So keep in mind tonight, I'm showing you tonight, there is no sign in the Bible for the rapture, but there are signs in the Bible that the tribulation is near. You listening? See, the rapture could come in any second. But we're seeing signs for the tribulation right now. And you very well may turn around and look and about 70% of the people in this church be gone before we get through. The devil wants to take young people to hell. His job is, teenagers, is to get you down and drag you to hell. He has many tools to do it. He has drugs. He has rock and roll. He has the current scene. I'm going to tell you about four teenage boys out in the Ozark Mountain in a fine little town. These boys got to dabbling around with the occult. They started fooling with Satanism. I'm going to show you a lot of stuff about Satanism tonight. What we got here tonight... That show Geraldo had on TV, that looked like a Sunday school class to what you're going to see tonight. These boys got the dabbling in Satanism through heavy metal music. The next thing you know, they had voices inside of them. This one here says, I felt like there was someone else inside my head. I could I not understand what they were saying. Young people, when you allow the devil to come in you, you open up yourself for demons to get in your body. And they control you, and that's what makes you rebellious, and that's what makes you unruly. These four boys, these four boys got to having these rituals. And they'd always take an animal and kill it. One of them got to talking to a demon. And the demon changed his name. His name was Ron or something like that. And the demon told him, he said, your new name is Alex. And he said, from then on, I began to go by Alex. Their mamas and daddies couldn't do anything with them. They would sit around in the house and take a Barbie doll and take that Barbie doll and twist her head off and then pound screws into her head and throw her head in the fire. And they would laugh and say, I wish that were a real human being. Another time they would meet out in the woods they found an old abandoned dryer that somebody left out there and they put up a little fluffy puff, puppy dog in the dryer and filled it up with lighter fluid and weeds and set it on fire. They said as that little puppy dog started screaming that it sounded like a human being. And little by little, these three young men that you see here tonight got themselves in a position so that the devil told them the way to really prove you love me, the devil says, is offer a human sacrifice. The next boy here, Pete Rowland, he said, boom, the music boomed from the tape deck. A language would later haunt Pete. That's after he's in court for murder. Dying time is here. These three boys, from his cell... He said, Satan tricked them. I don't even know why we killed Steve. But little at a time, they begin to talk about human sacrifice. And you might have heard this on the news. It just happened in 88. And in the article in the paper that I'm going to show, uh, tell you some of right now, they said there's four of them went out and took baseball bats. And they took one boy here, the one they killed. This is Steve Newberry. 
Why me, you guys? Why me? Ron was laughing. Because it's fun, Steve. He said they got him out there, and all of a sudden one of them jumped up and said, It's time! And he said, when it's time, one of the boys took her baseball bat and smashed Steve in the face. Steve weighed about 200 pounds and he started running. And he started screaming, why me, boys? Why me? Why me? And they said, because it's fun, Steve. They hit him 70 times with baseball bats. Left his body laying on the ground. And they said he was laying there moaning and groaning. They tied a 200-pound weight around his body, dropped him down in a well. And they said they pleased Satan. We might have some of you smart folks here tonight, mamas and daddies, that say all this Satanism is just a bunch of junk and stuff. You just flat don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> stuff is real. The Bible said in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They mentioned these guys right here a minute ago. Very popular. You see the satanic fury that old Ayatollah started a few weeks ago? It seems like on Newsweek. It seems like in USA Today. It seems like on television. Every time you turn around, it's Satanism. 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 There's a revival of evil hitting the land tonight. I believe the devil's giving it his biggest punch right before we go out of here. These are the guys you heard, we're going to hear singing tonight. And you, these guys are going to sing. You'll hear them that song. Guns and Roses. Take me down to the Paradise City. Take me down. First thing you'll notice about this group is, the first thing that should strike you is that there has each face of one of the group of a picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. Who is supposed to be on the cross years ago? Jesus the Savior, right? These guys saying, we're on the cross. We're on the cross. You see one at the top where they put a crown of thorns on his head. You see one on the left hand where they put nails through his left hand. You see one on the right hand where they put nails through his right hand. You see one at the feet where they drove nails and spikes through the feet of the Lord Jesus. And then you see one in the middle where they pierced the side of the Lord. And out came blood and water. You know what they're saying? They're saying, we're on the cross. On the cross, we want to take you to paradise. But what they're doing, kids, is telling you lies, lies, lies. They song like a suicide. They have a song called, I used to love her, but I had to kill her. Buried her in my backyard. You know what you're doing in actuality? You are dancing with demons. You hear me tonight? Here's another metal, said heavy metal teens commit suicide. Rock music and Satanism kill my son. A group called Iron Maiden. I want to show you this tonight because I want to give you a part of a song that they sing. This album has got seventh son of a seventh son. It's about the devil. It's about the Antichrist. It's about the mark of the beast. It's about all that's evil and what's coming into the world. You'll see a picture, I don't know if you can barely see it, but straight above my hand, about three feet, you can see someone pointing this way, and that's Eddie. Eddie is the group mascot that nobody can't figure out. He's one on the Number of the Beast album that's doing like this, you know, and he's controlling the devil. And they're saying that Eddie is more powerful than the devil. He's the group demon. The song I want you to listen to is called, Can I Play With Madness? And it says this, I screamed aloud to the old man. I said, don't lie. Don't you say you don't know. I say you'll pay for your mischief in this world or the next. Oh, and then he filled me with a freezing glance and hell fire raged in his eyes. He said, do you want to know the truth, son? I'll tell you the truth. Your soul's going to burn in the lake of fire. Look at these words. I say you'll pay for your mischief. Please 
More fire raised in his eyes. He said, son, you want to know the truth? Stone's going to burn the lake of fire. He said, your soul's going to burn. And he's right. Now let's look for a few minutes at this. There were false prophets among them, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Look at verse 2. Many shall follow their pernicious, that means evil, ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Did y'all you understand that verse? Let me take just a second and explain it. That verse means there's going to be so many crooked preachers that the real preachers are going to be criticized and called crooks too. Man, that tells me no lies. I'm looking for a miracle man who's not in disguise. I don't know where he'll come from, and I don't know where he's been. But it's not our Jimmy Center because he's so obscene. Miracle man got busted. Miracle man got busted. Here you see in the mountains of Tennessee, snake handlers. I don't know if anybody's ever saw a picture of this. You probably haven't. You've heard about the people who have worked themselves into some kind of hypnotic trance. Reach in and grab rattlesnakes and copperheads, wrap them around their neck, and dance in a frenzy saying that the Holy Ghost is doing that. I'm going to let you hear a little bit of one of their services. The ceremony is based upon the actual words from the Bible found in the 16th chapter of Mark. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. You'll hear them in the background. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. If you'll listen close, you'll hear a rattlesnake right now. Here's a man putting himself in the fire saying God told him to. Religion is being made a mockery tonight. It's being made fun of. They think we're all a bunch of kooks. You know what, if I, you know what I'd do if I was a devil? I'd bring up about 500 different religions and confuse it all because the average person too lazy to study the Bible and find out the truth. And they'd think, they'd think we're all a bunch of nuts and get them to hell. That's what the devil's doing. But let's look at the more gory side of false religion. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In 1969, Anton LaVey published the Satanic Bible. Now the thing you've got to remember about the Satanic Church is everything is backwards. The devil makes everything go backwards. So when Geraldo had Anton LaVey's daughter on his show not long ago and the little priest that looked like Alfred E. Newman on the front of the Mad Magazine, and he had him on there and they said, oh, we don't do those things in our church. What they think is, you say the opposite. If he says they don't, that means they do. One of the requirements of belonging to the satanic church is you have to be able to speak, talk, write, or read backwards. That's why backward masking is so popular in rock and roll. Here he is, and for the first time probably for, I guess, everybody in here, you're going to hear the voice of Anton LaVey. He published his Satanic Bible in 1969, and his followers have placed hundreds of thousands on the market. That's the very selfish religion. That's him. We believe in selfishness. We believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because it's just man's natural uh, feeling. He said we believe in everything that the Bible is against. They believe wrong is right and right is wrong. Now the devil, as I told you, makes things go backwards. Please listen to me tonight. Please listen. 
God's will runs one way, the devil's will runs the other way. The devil always makes things go opposite from the way God said. Example, Genesis 3, 4. God had told them earlier, if you eat the fruit of that forbidden tree, you'll surely die. What does the devil say? Ye shall not surely die. Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. What does the devil tell you? You don't have to do nothing they say. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives. What does the devil say? Ah, love somebody else's wife. You think the devil ain't running the show nowadays? Hey, and our young people are being bombarded with rock songs like the one you're going to hear right now. And the name of this song is <clears throat> Wrong is Right. And they beat it into young people's head over and over and over. Wrong is right. Wrong is right. Wrong is right. <laughs> Wrong is right, they say. But I'm telling you that's the devil in control. Wrong is wrong. And right is right. And wrong will never be right. And right will never be wrong. There's a thing nowadays called the New Age Movement. The New Age Movement says we're going to bring in a new world society. This thing gained momentum, <clears throat> especially through people like Shirley MacLaine. They have experiences. Shirley MacLaine said she was in a bathtub and all of a sudden this weird spirit came to her and she suddenly became the water and became the air. And she come out with a philosophy that God is God and all is God and everything is God and since everything is God, you... Shirley MacLaine got a demon in that bathtub. And she put out that movie and young people by the millions and mamas and daddies are following the New Age movement. They're following what they call channelers. Uh, other movies like Cagney, Cagney and Lacey, is also in this movement. And it's a movement that thinks that spirits come and speak through people called channelers. And they channel messages to us from the world beyond. Now what these messengers say is, there's no hell. You don't have to worry about God. It's fun after you die. Everything's all right. They say that... That's a pentagram on the front of that fellow's face, by the way. And they say that everybody has on their forehead a third eye. And with that third eye that you can't see with your other two eyes, you're able to contact spirits. That is right smack dab where the mark of the beast is going on your forehead. This woman here... was a former head of a business corporation. Get me up on the center one here, Mark, please. She's now an ordained minister. And she goes into trances and receives messages from another world. From spirits. She has claimed that even Jesus has spoke through her and that Jesus did not die on the cross for our sins, but that He was just a human being like us and we should leave Him alone and not exalt Him to Godhead. Listen to this woman's voice. Listen now. See up the top of this magazine? It says UFOs invade the earth. Fleets of flying saucers seen over major cities. There are reports by the thousands of UFOs. Now, do you know what these channelers are saying that UFOs are? Please, no one moving now. No one moving unless you absolutely have to. It's very important that you listen. They are saying that UFOs are going to make a big trip down here pretty soon. And they say that they are the guardians. 
that run these things. You say, well, preacher, how do you know that it ain't angels and stuff running around because angels don't work that way? And if anybody sees a UFO, it ain't God operating it. It's demons. You know what they're saying? They're saying that UFOs are going to come to this world and snatch a bunch of people and take them away. Now, if you've got high sense and been to church three months, you know what they're getting ready for. That's the rapture, man. When we're gone, they're going to say, UFOs come and got them and took them to another planet, and that's why they accept the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. This lady right here, she is a channeler. She speaks in trances. I'm going to let you hear something she said about those guardians. Run, 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 run. And me so far ahead, I can't even see me. Susie sees a cave. It's a dark cave. There's many trees around it. Oh, God, get us in there. I can't breathe. It's Diane is involved in contacting the dead and making prophecies while under hypnosis. Mary is a hypnotist and performs occult healings. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Can't you see that something's going on? Oh. It will be the year, your year, Listen. of around 1999. We will come again. This time we will not frighten you. She's speaking for the past. You will see us as a flash in the sky. What I was it? She said they're coming and they're not going to frighten you this time. You'll see it as a flash in the sky. This girl here was involved in the occult since she was real little. Here's what got her started. A Ouija board. And she wound up demon possessed and almost ruined her life before Jesus came into her heart. Listen, and you'll hear her testimony. Years old, I noticed that I was different from other children in the sense that I was becoming very attracted to the occult and to various horror movies that were on television, as well as I was having uh, a lot of nightmares and things like that. About the, t about the time I was 10, my mother very innocently bought me a Ouija board, and she would play with that Ouija board with me. And this Ouija board would make the most accurate predictions, though. It would tell us events that were going to happen, little accidents that would happen, things of this nature. And one day we decided to ask that Ouija board who he was. And he told us he was Satan, that he was the devil. And we laughed and thought, <laughs> oh, isn't that silly? There's no such thing as the devil. Now see, the devil's first trick is to get you to believe he don't exist. He's got you then. Now you're going to see something that I'm sure probably none of you have ever seen before. I don't, don't ask me how the, the Lord worked it out that I could get a hold of this just by a miracle. This is a cult leader in California. They're taking advice from lots of things that's going on in rock and roll nowadays. Because the major fad is soon becoming eating human flesh. What you're going to see right now in here is this man as he leads his group and they have a human sacrifice before them. They're going to cut this man's stomach open, reach in and grab his guts and pass them around and eat them. Now listen, be quiet, please, no talking. You think I'm kidding tonight, man? I'm telling you, that's going on right here in the United States. And you're going to hear it tonight and make a believer out of you. The first thing they do give everybody in the group a pill preparing them for the sacrifice he then goes and puts the dead body in the middle of the circle of about 10 or 12 of the participants and speaks these words about catching it as a gift what? this is ours this is ours people feel it come on come on 
The next thing the man does is make some kind of a weird, uncovers the dead man's body, inserts a knife, makes a split or a, and a cut cross in the man's stomach. As he opens up the man's body with a cross, you can see him as he reaches inside and pulls the man's entrails out and begins to eat it. The other group members take part. Hey, y'all listen to me tonight! They rub the body of the dead man all over themselves and then begin to lick and kiss it off of each other's bodies and wind up in a sexual orgy. This is a popular group called the Fine Young Cannibals. You know what a cannibal is? It's people that do what I just showed you. Boy, you got some good friends. Some of you girls got pretty high, got your makeup on, but you still have some dirty, nasty friends. The raw and the cooked. There's a parallel of the Antichrist in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar made a big image. On this image was gold. People had to bow down and worship him. He was 60 cubits high. He was 6 cubits across his breast. And they played 6 instruments, making 666 six, six, to bow down and worship this man. If you didn't, you went over here to the right, I mean the left, to the fiery furnace. During the tribulation, young people, there's going to be another man come. He's going to set up an image. And if you do not bow down and worship that image and receive the 666, you will be on the right side. The Bible said in Revelation 20 and verse 4, beheaded. That's the guillotine. You will cooperate with the government's plan of 666 or you will lose your life. You say it'll never happen, preacher. You watch this. That's a movie that's come out right now. After 300 years in the womb of hell, the son of Satan is born. It's showing a woman giving birth to the son of Satan. You didn't see movies like that 20 years ago. You know what started about? The exorcist. And what they're saying is, the devil is coming on the scene. Y'all listening, ain't you? They've even come up with a new system, <clears throat> excuse me, called the beast system. And in this system, it is all based upon the number 666. When the common market meets, they have already discussed appointing a world president with a one world currency, a one world money card, and a one world government. You see on the map, Brussels, Belgium, right there in the middle, or up on the left hand corner. In Brussels, Belgium, there lies the great master computer. This computer is called the Beast. All the major computers of the world are going to be linked into this main computer covering about two or three stories of this, of this building here. That's where it's located and the European Common Market headquarters is saying that we are soon going to be operating through Brussels, Belgium with major checkpoints in the United States fed into the big computer. Here you see a laser gun that is going to scan your hand as you go to the grocery store to buy groceries. It's already in use. They're practicing and trying it out. Wake up, teenager! Jesus is coming. What they're saying is, they're saying, we're going to put the mark on your hand, on your forehead, 
That way, if you have a card, but you'll not lose that mark off your hand or your forehead. When you go to the grocery counter, you might have $50 worth of groceries, but you don't use money no more because it costs too much to fool with and to stop rape and robbery and drug traffic. The Antichrist is going to say, hey, I can stop all of that. Let's put a mark on people's hand. Does this sound far-fetched to you tonight? You listen. Just keep a-watching. This is the seal of the common market. The Lamb and the number 666. You say, well, preacher, don't they know that's in the Bible? They have phoned them guys up and asked them why they use the number 666. And the guys say, I've never heard of it being in the Bible. If there's any relation to this in the Bible, it is strictly coincidental. They don't even know it's in the Bible. You know why they said they use 666? Because a computer scanner can read it easily. And Revelation 13 says, No man might buy or sell, say that he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. 600, three score, and six. Shirt collars are stamped in red china with 666 on the bar, on the, the inside their shirt collars. The U.S. Treasury Department, uh, Fire and Woods and Alcohol Division, has 666 at the bottom of their badges as their official number. Your Lear Siegler stamp, which is destined for the common market, official number is 666. They say three sets of sixes, 666, 666, three times. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, three sixes. That's 18 numbers. And using those pictures right there, it can assign every person in the world a number. As far back as 1980 on your W-2 form, you see it says people enter 666, and you put the following one are the code numbers after 666. Zaire Department Store use a 666 as the beginning of their charge card. They say in a magazine, we're ready to put the number on our foreheads. Your worldwide money card is now ready. Your final number is assigned. Now, I want to show you how they do it. The first number, there's a bunch of numbers behind that black line. See the little computer marks there in the middle? That's on everything you buy at the grocery store. Everything you buy. And on the one side, it says your international code number. That'll be 666. Right after that will be, if you're living in the United States, your number will be 110. The United States international number is 110. It's a 110 nation. 666-110. Your next number will be your area code, like 704 for us. Your next number will be your social security number, and that's the way your number will look. And if you're here tonight, you girls, right down here, you boys over here, you young man, back there around the wall, if you're not ready to meet Jesus when he comes and you die and you're, you're left here behind, you're going to get one of these numbers to wear. J.C. Penney done the same thing. South Central Bell does the same thing down here in the corner. 666, then your Social Security number. Sears card, 666, down here at the bottom. It's already put in computer marks, just like what's in the, on the cans at the store, on their hands and on their foreheads. You see, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Here's a computer mark. All these, I don't know what all them lines mean. It's got a number there. And then these three little dots down here with F and H, and they called them up to the company and said, what's the F and H stand for? And that means forehead or hand. What do you think about that, scoffer? Hey, you can sit here and play cool if you want. Oh, I don't believe none of this. I'm only a cool man. Listen, you're an idiot. So I don't like you. I'm not up here to get you to like me. I'm up here to try to shock you and to get in your life right with the Lord. I hope you like me, but if you don't, I'm sorry. I just want you to like the Lord. Soon to come in grocery stores everywhere. It will be 666 at the checkout counter. 
you run your hand over the, over the scanner, or they put the little scanning gun over your forehead, check out your name. And then you will get your groceries. The old prophet said that in those days no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the number of the beast. This old world's a going fast, friend. This old world's a going fast. Oh, thank God, thank God that we can cling to the old rock of ages. Let me hide myself in thee. During the tribulation, water's going to turn to blood. People will wish that God had been saved and went with us when we went. The Jews are going to run from the Antichrist in the pit for the Red Rock City and say, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And the Antichrist will be running them. Matthew 24 said that the war unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. Let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. I'd hate to be here when the water turns to blood. I'd hate to be here when they'll catch your head off for refusing the mark of the beast. I'd hate to be here when they're mocking God and cursing and sores are coming out all over your body while people worship the Antichrist. I'd hate to be here when that day comes. You say, preacher, what's our hope? What's our hope? What's our hope? I'll tell you, friends, this evening, we have a hope. I'll tell you this evening, we have a hope. You hear me? We have a hope. We have a hope. Here's our hope. <laughs> out of the sea, man. Glory to God. Think all them Christians that drown. Hey, what do you think about this at a funeral? Ain't that wild? woo Oh, that's the way it's going to be. Hey, what if you was a doctor and you wasn't saved and you had old grandma on the operating table? Grandma had cancer and boy, you was about ready and you said, nurse, hand me that knife and you turned around and grandma was gone. Man, that'd make you take a few volumes, wouldn't it? I know what some of your problem is. You're the lost boys. Here's your tune. You're the lost boys. <laughs> Yeah, we hear you, Mr. Cool. You bad, man. You are so bad that it's pitiful. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do, are they? You're gonna live your own life, ain't you? You ain't gonna listen to the preacher, are you? You ain't gonna listen to mom and daddy, are you? You're just gonna be cool and do your own thing. Well, let me show you what's going to happen to you. One of these days, the Lord's going to haul you up to judgment. 
Every sin you've ever committed. You teenagers on the front here, y'all listen to me. Every sin you've ever committed, God's going to bring it right back in your face. And you won't have no excuse and you'll say, Oh God, oh God, have mercy on me. And your soul will be cast in the lake of fire. Which one's your choice? There ain't no purgatory. Every kid in this room tonight is on their way to heaven or hell. You say, now preacher, you really believe in scaring people. But if, they, if you ain't scared of going to hell, you're sick. You're sick in your brain, man. You ought to be scared of going to hell. You say, I don't believe it ought to be scary. Bible, you don't know your Bible very well, do you? The Bible said, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You know what thing you need? You need to be shook out of your boots, brother. There's not enough fear of God in America anymore. While you're here, we'll be admiring Him around the throne. While you're there...